No. Not again. Clogging. The stuff of 3D printing nightmares. It ruins your print. It's a faff to clean up. Ask me how I know. So stick around and I'll show you all the steps how I solve clogging on my clone or metal hot end. Let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the garage. Well, okay, you got me, not the garage, it's the home office. But hey, it's January 2021. Not only is it colder than frig out there, I'm not allowed to leave my house if I wanted to. Ah, lockdown problems. Anyway, all metal hot ends and clogging. So, like a lot of people, I had my printer for a few months and I'd had zero issues. My Ender 3 Pro just turned out the PLA. No problems. But I wanted to use more uh, yeah, functional filaments like, like fancy carbon fibre nylon. So I thought I need to upgrade the, the ender. And so I got this all metal hot end from eBay. So in keeping with the theme of the channel, I wanted to do it at a low cost. So it is a clone. It's not a name brand. But I, look, I went on eBay. It, it wasn't the cheapest. And look, it's German, German. It's got to be good. So it came, no instructions. So I, I assembled it, uh, best guess, sliced my model and off I went. But I kept getting loads and loads of clogs of PLA, which you've already seen. So much so I even removed it, went back to the old hot end, just so I could get a printout. It was a failure, total failure. But I still want to use the fancy filament. I mean, I bought it, and so I need to still need to use the hot end, and I've got to make it work with the PLA because I don't want to rip my printer apart every time my kid wants a new wobbly dinosaur. Look, Ankylosaurus. Mm. Anyway, so I've done a bit of research, thought about it a bit, and I've got a few things to try. So I'm going to share with you guys what's worked for me and what I've done, the steps I've made and what I've done. Hopefully they'll work for you too. So first thing to try, withdrawal, um, that, that retraction. That was it, that withdrawal is completely different. But I, everyone knows the retraction setting, uh, chances are you've already tuned it um, to minimize stringing with your old hot end, that's what I did. Um, basically whenever the whenever the, the hot end goes to another, end, another side of the printer so it's not printing it just withdraws retracts <laughs> the filament uh, slightly just to stop it dribbling basically mm, yeah that's basically the gist of it um, but so I tuned it with my old hot end which had PTFE running all the way to the nozzle lovely lovely slippery PTFE um, so I was running about four to six mil and settled on about four and a half mil of retraction. Um, but I don't have PTFE anymore, I've got metal. So that's probably the first thing I need to look at because um, every time I pull that up, maybe four or five mil, I'm going from the hot area where it's melted to the cold area. So that's going to give me a real clogging problem straight away because as soon as I pull the molten filament up it's going to cool and then I'm not going to be able to get past it. Okay so literally all I did I took my standard Cura profile which is one of the Chuck Hellebuck ones um, 25 millimeters per second speed on the retraction and just put it down to one mil. Why one mil? Because it's an extreme value you're not going to be able to go much smaller than that and it should prove the point will it help or won't it? And there you go there's only one way to find out So this is the first print I did just with my PTFE settings and you can see uh, some real problems here, a total failure and just absolute abortion. This is with the one mil retraction and still a failure um, with a lot of stringing but I got a lot further and you see it got through a lot of retractions there so I 
don't think it's the, the retraction setting is wrong here. Um, there's a couple of things. So that's about an hour and a half into the print. So that thinks, uh, I think that's probably more like heat creep because for us to have a clogging with only one mil of retraction, that means it's not melting down here. It's melting very close to the hot, to the cool end. Uh, so the heat break is getting too hot. So that means the cooler's not doing a good enough job, especially on the, you know, on the long prints. The retraction was fine. It just got to the point where it couldn't carry on and gave up. So heat creep, that's the next thing, next thing to deal with. So with the hot end in bits, you can see all the pieces. You've got the nozzle, the heater block, the heat break, the cooler, and the coupler. So the, the, kind of the key thing for me, if you look at the, this is supposed to keep the heat break cool. So it keeps this end cool. And you can see there's just not much interaction there. It's maybe six or seven mil to go between. Ah, it's just uh, not much at all. And if you look at the, the fit, yeah, it's just floating around in there. It's like a mini driving down the channel tunnel. It's just, I suppose it's the perils of buying a clone, but it's gonna be no good for heat transfer at all. So to try and fix this, I picked up a few of these from eBay, uh, like thermal grease and little syringe, so CPU cooler. So it's used to glue heat sinks onto CPUs, or not glue, but um, improve thermal transfer. Uh, so I'm gonna use it between the heat block and the nozzle because we want the nozzle as hot as possible. I'm gonna use it between the um, heat break and the cooler because I want this end of the heat break as cool as possible. And I'm not gonna use it here between the heat break and the heater block because I want this bit hot and these bits cold. So I want this to be not the best transfer point at all. Right, let's do it. Release the schmoo. So normally you don't need much of this stuff because I'm trying to close up a bit of a gap. I'm going to put a bit of a thick coating on. So now we've got the heat transfer compound on this should keep that side a lot cooler let the heat get taken away there and keep this end a lot warmer um, top tip before you snug that all the way down the nozzle warm this up to like 240 250 degrees because this block's going to expand and it's just going to come loose <laughs> bitter experience right let's try it Success! We've got a full print off. So we got there in the end. Um, lots of stringing. Uh, it's like a harp. Um, I think I'm going to need to tweak the heat, uh, the print temps, because I think the nozzle's getting a bit warmer now than it was. By the way, we've got to make some tweaks, but no clogging. However, dear listener, I've been cheating you for this is not the part this is the part so this is a, here's one I made earlier with my old hot end um, it's quite a bit bigger as you can see and this is about 66% um, same challenges but uh, just not using all the PLA and you get the answer quicker so good signs but not there yet Hey, yes. So a full size, no clogging, all printed with the all metal hot end. Excellent. Again, lots of stringing. Uh, I've not even tried to work on that, but you can see they match up beautifully now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so I was just gonna leave it there, but it feels wrong. It feels like we swapped one problem, clogging for another problem, stringing. So I've done a bit more work and I've changed a few more settings and I've done a calibration print and a calibration print and a calibration print. And what well, you get the idea. 
and sharing, changing various things. I got to this kind of a result. I thought, okay, so this is this is worthwhile looking at. And one of the other things I did was I kind of woke up with a, a, a an epiphany that the nozzles I was having, I was using cheap and nasty hardened ones off off eBay, sorry off Amazon. Got a little flat area there, and the normal nozzles, the standard ones, come to a far smaller point, far sharper. Maybe that changed it as well. So I did a reprint today of the of the model, and this is where we were. A nice harp effect. And this is where we're at now. So still some stringing, but far, far reduced. We've got picked up some oozing though, uh, which doesn't look particularly pretty, but it just shows you tinkering, spending a little bit of time can have a world of difference. So the settings I ended up at were still at one mil retraction, didn't change that at all. Um, 40 mil retract, 40 millimeters per second retraction speed, 15 millimeters per second reprime, and 200 millimeters per second um, rapid travel. Um, and I think the settings made a big difference, and also thermally sorting out the hot end made a huge difference. The paste was the keys to the kingdom. So further developments, I think ducting more air and a better fan for the cooler will help cool that heat break a lot more. And there's, there's a couple of other things we can do there as well. If you've got any ideas, please put them in the comments. What's worked for you? Have you already solved this problem? Uh, you know, I'd love to ha hear your experiences or your problems. Is, have these solutions not worked for you? Do we need to carry on going? So any of that, please put it in the messages um, and we can discuss it. Um, I hope you've helped, found this helpful. I have. Um, and even had a bit of fun uh, along the way. Uh, if you found it helpful, press the thumbs up button, please. Um, you can subscribe if you like. I don't paste very often. I won't paste here. Um, but in the meantime, we can say keep your nozzles sharp and see you soon.